Hello everyone. My name is Rochelle Johns and I'm a gastroenterologist with the Excella Health Medical Group. Today, I am going to discuss the most common chronic liver disease in the United States. This disease is fatty liver disease. I'll start off by explaining what exactly is fatty liver disease? Who is at risk for developing a fatty liver? What are the symptoms? How we diagnose? And finally, how we treat this common liver disease. So what does the liver do? Well, first off, the liver is the largest organ inside your body. It's located on the right side under your ribs. It functions to store energy, iron, and vitamins. It makes proteins that are essential for your blood to clot. And it removes alcohol, medications, and poisons from your body. It helps digest food by making a juice called bile this then breaks down fats that are in our diet. So what is fatty liver disease? It's a condition in which fat builds up in your liver. There's two main types. The first is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, also known as NAFLD. The second type is alcoholic fatty liver disease. But today, we're not gonna focus on the alcoholic fatty liver disease, but rather the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD. So now when we focus on NAFLD, this can also be broken down into two types. The first of which is NAFL, non-alcoholic fatty liver. So the liver, it has fat buildup, but there's no inflammation. The second type is the one we worry about. That is called NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Breaking down steatohepatitis, steato means fat, hepatitis, inflammation. So the liver has fat buildup and the liver is inflamed. So who is at risk for developing NASH? Well, first off, the cause of NASH is really unknown, but researchers do know that it's more common in people who have type 2 diabetes, who have obesity, who are middle-aged or older, but children can also get it. If you have high levels of fat in the blood, such as high cholesterol, high triglycerides, if you have high blood pressure, insulin resistance, or it's also called the metabolic syndrome, this is when the body does not respond adequately to insulin. This is the precursor phase to diabetes. If you have rapid weight loss, this can cause fat deposition in the liver. And then lastly, certain medications that we give to treat other medical conditions, such as steroids, amiodarone treats heart disease, and then a cancer drug called tamoxifen. Now, given that the rates of obesity type 2 diabetes, and high cholesterol are rising in the United States, so is the rate of NAFLD. This explains why it is the most common chronic liver disease we face today. Moving on to symptoms of NASH. Well, there's usually no symptoms. It's a silent disease. But rarely, one may say they feel fatigue, a general feeling of unwell, it may be some vague discomfort in the upper right side of your abdomen. Though, keep in mind, it is not clear that these symptoms are related to NASH. We usually diagnose NASH just incidentally, meaning you get blood tests for another reason, and we find that your liver function tests are elevated. There's two liver enzymes called AST and ALT, and these are elevated in approximately 90% of people with NASH. Your doctor then will likely get additional labs. We have to rule out other causes for liver disease, such as viral hepatitis, hepatitis A, B, and C. We can get imaging of the liver. This is with ultrasound, CT scan, or MRI. This shows fatty deposition in the liver. And sometimes we need a liver biopsy. This is when you use a needle to obtain a sample of liver tissue in order to make the diagnosis. But nowadays, we prefer a safer, less invasive means to diagnose in place of biopsy, 
So there are blood tests now that can measure fibrosis, which is scarring, and there's an ultrasound called a fiber scan. This is an ultrasound that shows how stiff the liver is. Now the stiffness estimates how much scarring is in the liver, and that can tell us whether or not cirrhosis has developed, because cirrhosis means scarring of the liver. When you say cirrhosis, everyone thinks it's alcohol, and they're like, I don't drink. But really, any process that causes inflammation in your liver can lead to scarring and cirrhosis. How is it treated? Well, there's no cure for NASH. There's no approved medications for treatment. Those studies are ongoing. And if you want a dietary or herbal supplement, I suggest you talk to your doctor first because some think vitamin E may be helpful, but in high doses, it's actually harmful and it can increase the risk of death in certain people. And then some herbal remedies can actually cause liver injury. Treatment is actually aimed at controlling the conditions associated with NASH. So diabetes, you really want to get your sugar under control. High cholesterol, high triglycerides, work on getting those numbers down into the normal range. If you're obese, you wanna eat a healthy diet, really limit your salt, your sugar intake, start eating lots of fiber, vegetables and whole grains. You wanna get regular exercise, so keep on mall walking. This is gonna help you lose weight and this is gonna reduce the fat in your liver. But remember, lose that weight gradually because too much weight loss can lead to fatty deposition in the liver. And lastly, avoid alcohol. I do have one take home message. I think you need to realize that the most common cause of illness and death in people with fatty liver, NAFLD, NASH, is actually not liver disease, but rather heart disease, heart attacks, strokes. So if you're diagnosed with NASH, you really wanna concentrate on reducing any risk factors for developing heart disease. So again, these lifestyle changes, your diet, weight loss, exercise, limit alcohol, and give up smoking if you smoke. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about your liver and your health. Have a good day.